muriyo muno bulisha mulala huko fukirira nirwa cheri kwalino kwinyweni it is a great honor and blessing to me to be able to come to preach this word to you bulibu sanga bwe hukia moniche nirwa chero muinana and i will tell you this i feel a burden in my heart to preach to you in a way that you will be burdened and I will tell you this I feel a burden in my heart to so much of who Christ is that it will give you a hunger and a desire to learn more. It is so important for us to know who Christ is as Jonathan talked about. But I also want to challenge you with something that I learned. One of my favorite men, Dr. Justin Peters, said this. He said, it is not enough to know Christ, you have to know the right Christ. There are many people today who say, I know Jesus, I know Jesus. But they don't know exactly who Jesus is. And here, let me explain it to you with an analogy. Let's say that I said that I know Pastor Winslow. And you were to say to me, describe for me Pastor Winslow. What if I told you, I know Pastor Winslow, he is a man with blue hair and green skin. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. You would say, you don't know Pastor Winslow. Yeah. You would look at me as if I was crazy. Mm. Yes. But there are men out there who talk about Christ yes. in such a crazy way yes. that we don't even bat an eye. We have little care for it. We would think it's crazy for me to say Pastor Winslow has blue, uh, green skin and blue hair but there are people who pass idly by as people speak wrongly about the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to exalt Christ to you and to describe him as the word describes him. Yes. I want to teach you soundly who Christ is and encourage you to look to the scriptures and how Christ is described so that you can be equipped to look at somebody and say, you're crazy for describing Christ. No, Christ Christ. Amen. 
So let me start, and, and I'm going to be going through several passages and just piecing some things together for you. So are you ready for the word? Yes. Yes. I'm going to read to you now John 1, 1 through 18. Because I do not want to hide anything from the scriptures from you. All right. And is everybody there who has a Bible? All right. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things are made through him. And without him was not anything made. That was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God. Whose name was John. This is referring to John the Baptist. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light. That all might believe through him. He was not the light. But he became but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone has come in, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father. Full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him. And cried out, This is he of whom I said. He who comes after me ranks before me. Because he was before me. For, uh, for from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God. Who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. What a beautiful section of scripture. 
Just eating that word of God is just enough for our souls. Who was this word that was from the beginning? It was Christ. Now what am I going to teach you about Christ from this section? I'm going to teach you many, many good things. It says here that the, in the beginning the word... <coughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What we can learn from this is that Jesus, being the Word, was with God. And He was God. This is important because there are many people who say that Jesus is the same as the Father. Jesus is the third, a second person of the Trinity. He and the Father are uh, He and the Father are one in unity in purpose. They are two persons, but a part of, uh, but are not just parts, but they are fully the same God. Amen. You see that they, uh, that the Father and the Son here, uh, that the Father sent the Word, sent the Son. Papa karuma omuana what else can we learn about Jesus from this section? <coughs> he was in the beginning. Yesu kawao muhuranga. Jesus being in the beginning brought the universe into existence. Ah, uh, Yesu ngawao muhuranga kare rasibara huwao. That is amazing because there, because Jesus was born of Mary, but yet he was there before the beginning of the earth. No, no, no. Lilili huwalia huu kia munga na kanichefwe na huwelewa huwelewa wali Yesu ngali huwa kare la siva la huwa lakini anu kuita kunyola mbo Yesu kasarwa nende maria siva la nesiriyo. Isn't that amazing? No, no, lilili huwalia huu kia. Now we can see the amazing of Christ that he was God in heaven before the foundation of the earth, and he then came to this world in flesh as a human being. No, no, Evangelion Kerico, Kavao, Ngawere, Siva, and the Silonga, and Silonga, Maradun, the Bangria, Borelli, no, no, Nia Gari, Huaketa, Casa, Romuvi, Huonia Siva. That is breathtaking. Yani, ah, I didn't get away where Hunio or Huera. And he, and when he came into this world, he came with a purpose. It says here, for for from his full, uh, fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. The law of Moses was was intended to reveal to us our sinful nature. The law of God condemns us. It says, uh, Jesus says this. Yes, what am I? If you have committed, uh, if you have said to somebody you are an idiot, <coughs> then you have committed murder. Mm-hmm. I love Maria. Hallelujah. I love Ya mama ni mnyara wa bora na mundo rumu musiru rumu chinga ulinge mpwa na bulai bali tayari we lili. 
We also know that if the Word of God says if you are a liar, you are, sorry, also the Word of God says thou shalt not lie. How many of you have told a lie? According to the law, you are a sinner. According to Romans, the wages of sin is death. You were condemned by the law. But Jesus is came with a purpose to offer grace upon grace. And he came and spilt his blood on our behalf. This plan was before the beginning of the foundations of the earth. And we know this because John the Baptist was born before Jesus. But what's interesting is John says, he ranks before me, meaning Christ. Okay. Amen. But also, he says this. Jesus, because he ranks before me because he came before me. Yes. Jesus also came for another purpose. He came in the flesh and revealed the very nature of who God is amongst men. No, no. Christ being God in the flesh lived a perfect life. He faced every sin and every tempt he faced every temptation to sin that you and I have. Go. Yes. That is amazing. Because here's here's what it says in Hebrews 14 or Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Let me turn to it real fast. It says in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 4, 15, and 16, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Kurinende omuhurundu muhuru ohira ba hurundu bosi uwamenya mu mubiri nende mafuki mara kamera mahako kama kali chimira ne kiminina ne kali se kengira ko mahaka kota nyombo ahuoniye wene nase. Jesus came to this earth as a man and he had as as full as truly God and truly man, and he even had the ability to sin, but he did not sin because he lived fully obedient to the Father. Why did he not sin? 
To be a propitiation for your sins. Nyombo, kola ne hu ana sisa hiro sisi ola na hu huoniye we. Amen. Let us go to another verse to learn a little bit more about this Christ. Ha hu che hu ni 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 we ike hunga ke hu Christo. Let's go to Galatians one one through four uh, one through four. Wa kala tia lula la lula la pa kahane. Here's what we can learn from the Apostle Paul right at the beginning of Galatians 1. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father. Who raised him from the dead. And all the brothers who are with me to the church of Galatia. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is a wonderful introduction to the book of Galatians. Notice sort of what I said earlier, it verifies, it says, God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see here, it makes a distinction between the persons, but shows that they are both God. The word Lord and God is the same word in the Greek. That word is curious. That means master. Why do I tell you this? Pastor Winslow has been talking with Jonathan and I. And he has told me that there have been false teachers around. And here is the thing, these false teachers teach a wrong view of Christ. I've heard that there are Jehovah's Witnesses in the area. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that Jesus was not God. They believe that he was a God. They believe that Christ was not the creator, but he was a the first created being. Do you see the problem? Amen. That's like saying Pastor Winslow has blue hair. Do you see why theology is important? Because the, because the right belief in who Christ is is the difference between life and death. No, 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 manya, bungali, Christo na nunie, o nyawa manya, akari kari weli fwa, nende bura mu, gabi fwana. And Paul knew this. Ne Paulo kama nyangama huwaka. 
That's why he worded this the way that he did. But what else do we learn from this? We learn something wonderful about Christ just from the beginning of the book of Galatians. That the God of the universe, Christ Jesus, the Jesus, came to this earth and he gave himself voluntarily for the sins of men. That Christ completed that task on the cross. And Pastor Winslow tells me there are Roman Catholics all around in the area. It says here that Christ came to deliver us from sin completely. Amen. That Christ was the sacrifice for sin. Roman Catholicism doesn't believe that Christ was a full propitiation for your sin. They believe that you have to believe in Christ and the sacraments. They believe they don't believe you're saved by Christ alone. Isn't that like saying Pastor Winslow has green skin? Do not tolerate false teaching. Look to the scriptures and the scriptures alone for how Christ is revealed. No, no, in that one. In that one. Hallelujah. Adi haruma adi basa. Anaro mangaria. No manje Christo mubungaji. Basa ro kamwa tevange diata ina weta. Iga kabulinda ro mubange di. It says in the Word of God that there is only one mediator between Christ and uh, between God and man, and that is the that is Christ Jesus. My mother is Catholic. And she tells me that you can't that the mediation between Christ, God, man and God is Christ, but we need a mediator between man and Christ. And she says that's Mary or the saints. Yani, my way went into my wangi, back Catholic. Says the Camboranga, Rosa Maria, the Cahuira, who is Marabunga in Boko, said if one are your ta, who is an endo, who is a way of Murara, where yes, of Christo, Maria Sariota. We have a great high priest and a loving mediator. Amen. I know that I can go to God because of the one mediator. I don't need any other mediator. Amen. 
And neither do you. Let me turn to Philippians 2, 6 through 11. Who, the, uh, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He did not count equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. In heaven and on earth. And under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. Doesn't that take your breath away? Just hearing the word of God. Go back I didn't know Christ came and he came as a servant, and since he served and died on the cross for our sin. God has the Father has exalted his name, the name above every name. And what that means is this. He is Lord. Every knee will bow to him, whether they like it or not. And here's the thing, there are so many people in, in America who says, you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. No, you don't need to make Jesus Lord of your life. He already is Lord of your life. Yes. You might as well bow now and understand that he is Lord regardless of how you feel. Amen. He is the God of heaven. He is the one who is exalted. Either your knee will bow be out of love and a reverence for who he is, or your knee will bow knowing that you are wrong to be judged. I was once an atheist. And I don't know, sorry, no. Come on, mundo, but the atheist did the man is a very cool. Sekama, and Yavida, Mania, we're the Pussy, but I'm wearing bow. 
And I am glad that God did a work in my heart. So that I, my, when my knee bows to the Lord, it is a bowing of reverence. Let me ask you, is your when you bow before Christ, is your bow going to be a bow of reverence? Or is it going to be a bow of of knowing you are going to be in absolute ruin and you just had to acknowledge it because Christ just revealed his his utter glory to you. No, no, no. No, si ka manga si we no wa we. E we changa wo ri wo ho ere ho no ma ri we ere e we wo ra na. Na mo si ka manga ri si ka mo riyo. Wo ho ke se na boko. E wo cha ku tabu ri wa, wo cha ku wona ki wa, se wo ra na ta ku we ra we ra ri we ere we ru ya ri. Amen. Se mo ambe re we ja ko re ra kwa. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say another verse that will help help us understand more of who Christ is. Colossians 1:15 through 23. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. When it says he is the firstborn of all creation, that means he is the one who has the inheritance as the son. And it says, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions. Or rulers or authorities. All things are created through him and for him. Let me stop there. What did we learn from this? We learned that Christ is authority over everything. There is no authority on earth or no principalities that are, are not under his dominion. Whether it be governing authorities that are here on this earth, whether they be wicked or just, Christ has put them there for his honor and his glory. Uh -huh. That's why in 1 Timothy it says for us to pray for our earthly leaders so that we may have peace. So that we can pray for their souls. If they are unjust, pray for their hearts that Christ can turn their hearts. Instead of complaining about authorities among you, pray for those authorities and pray that Christ does a work in their hearts. Pray for their well-being. Basali 
We also learn this from this passage. Let's go, go some more. And he is before all things, and all things are whole together. And he is the head of the body, the church. Let me stop there. He is the head of the church. No man is the head of the church. Amen. I'm a pastor of a church. I am not the head of the church. Bishops are, or so-called apostles who pretend to be be teachers of the word of God, they are not the head of the church. There is no authority who is head of the church. Besides Christ. We talked about Roman Catholicism. The Pope is not the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church according to the scriptures. So don't let anybody tell you that there is the head of the church or day the head, uh, it is Christ and Christ alone. Christ Christ has appointed pastors though. No, no, Christ Christ has appointed shepherd appointed as the head shepherd under shepherds. No, no, Christ if you are a pastor, or, or you acknowledge your pastor, like myself as a pastor, we are going to have to have an accountability to the Lord. Uh-huh. And if they are doing something wrong with your souls that are not according to the word of God, they are false teachers. Wolves and sheep's clothing. But remember this, it says this, that Christ Jesus was the Word. And the Word of God is the Word of Christ. Anyone who goes away from the Word, from the left or to the right, are not true believers and they are not true leaders of the church. So look to the headship of Christ as the only head of the church. And remember that your pastors are servants serving to, a, to bring about the word of God to you. Now let me turn to one more passage to teach you something about Christ. John 5, 22 through 29. And I want you to read this along with me because it is 
it's such so important that you get this. It says this. You want, let me start at 19 so you can get the context. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the son, the son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, that the son does likewise. For the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. No, no, come on, we've For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one. But has given all judgment to the Son. That all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father. Who sent him? Oamuruma. Truly, I say say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judge. Uh, he does not come into judgment. But he has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming. It is now here. I lost my place. <coughs> when, when the dead will hear. The voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him an authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this. For an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. And come out. Those who have, uh, who have done good to the resurrection of life. And to those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. What do we learn about Christ from this passage? That in the Trinity. The Father and the Son, though they are equal in authority and majesty and power, the Son submits to the Father. The Son is not less than the Father. 
Submission does not mean less than. But what this does show us is that Christ gives himself over to the will of the Father. Because he and the Father are one. 